I'm Jane Doherty. I am one of the co-chairs of this group. Um, I am very fortunate to work with two outstanding colleagues from Japan and the Netherlands, Taro Tokai and Tim Guten from the Netherlands. The three of us work together, um, putting this group together. And we could not do any of our work without our outstanding secretariat, Scott Schmidt from OECA. So uh, we're very lucky to have such a good team. This group in the informal working group on data storage and event data recorders is unique in the sense that we report to both GRVA and to GRSG. Uh, we work primarily on data storage activities under GRVA for automatic vehicles, but we also work on event data recorders and report directly to GRSG on, on our work. So the objectives of our data storage systems and event data recorders is um, to identify differences between the two different systems um, and propose ways forward uh, for both systems, uh, making sure that we are encouraging innovative technologies, but also being very protective of national privacy concerns and, and, and um, interests at the national level on privacy. So, so it is a very difficult task trying to make sure that we're providing guidance to regulators, providing uh, assistance and guidance to manufacturers, making sure that we are trying to stay out uh, uh, ahead of the technologies and where they're going, and making sure that we're also protecting individual privacy rights. So those are some of our objectives. Um, moving to the next slide. Uh, want to talk a little bit about what we've accomplished so far. Our group has been uh, active since December of 2019. Uh, and we have been identifying and working at the national and regional levels, having our country uh, and our um, contracting parties identify what they're working on in both event data recorders, but also data storage systems at the national, regional, and local levels, and, and sharing with one another best practices and our activities. Uh, we, are, we have a document that I, outlines what's happening at both the regional and the national levels. We keep that updated. We'll be doing another update very soon of what's happening in the respective countries. And we use our working group to share that information between us so that everyone um, is able to come up to speed on what the latest technologies are and what are some of the concerns that are happening. As you can imagine, there are significant differences between an event data recorder and a data storage system for an automatic vehicle. So we have put together uh, a comparison and an identification of the differences, everything from the purpose of what the system is, uh, what the system should not do, uh, what the recording period should be, what the st system storage capabilities of the EDR versus a DSAD uh, for a level three, level four vehicle would be the capacity to record that data during a crash, uh, the survivability of that data after a crash, what triggers the initiation of a data storage system, um, the vibrations, the malfunction detections, where we store the information is also very important, what kind of data elements you're looking for in an EDR versus a data storage system, how do you retrieve that information, how do you make sure it's accessible and it's accurate, um, and how often are you testing it? So those are some of the differences between a DSSAD and the EDR that we've been looking at and guiding our work. Um, since we started, we have also put some data storage requirements together for the initial lane keeping system uh, regulation that was put together, regulation 157. We see that as a uh, very good first step, uh, but we have a lot more work to do uh, to make sure that we are encompassing all automated driving systems. So that was the beginning of our work. We recently, earlier this month, were able to have approval from WP29 of a, of a new UN regulation on event data recorders. Uh, this is the first regulation under the 1958 agreement only, and it will um, concern uh, the EDRs, making sure that it's usable, usable, the data is valuable for crash investigations and analysis, um, and it's looking at safety equipment performances. So it outlines for vehicles and categories M1 and, and, and N1, uh, how you use an event data recorder, what are the minimum collection storage 
and crash survivability requirements in case of a crash and, and how are you going to um, record that, that information. So that is the first regulation that we have put together. Uh, again, it's only applies to the 58 agreement. It is not the um, global requirements or the global regulations. We also adopted a series of amendments to that regulation that are transitional in nature. In other words, today the, the manufacturers may not have the capability or they have not prepared their event data recorders to cover certain uh, functions and elements, but they will transition in 2024 and 2026 to including additional elements and requirements under the, the, the amendments of the 01 series of amendments that are coming. And then the third document that we've been working on is a guidance document on EDRs that uh, provides guidance to parties to the 58 as well as the 98 agreement. On what elements should be in an EDR? What should they be looking for as far as um, accessibility, storage, et cetera? So, those are the outcomes that we've had thus far. Uh, and moving on to the next slide, talk about some of the activities that will be coming up shortly. So I mentioned to you earlier, we keep a compilation of all of what's happening at the national and regional level. We also want to keep a compilation and we're going to be putting together of best practices. What are we learning, not only from the contracting parties and the regulators, but what are we hearing from the industry? What are we hearing from some of the software experts? Because DSSAD has brought in a whole nother set of experts and expertise into our group. It's not simply the conventional auto manufacturers that we're working with. We're working with a lot of folks from Silicon Valley and all over the world that are IT specialists and working with us and teaching us about their best practices. So we're trying to figure out the best way and what are some of the best practices that we can incorporate from the IT world into the auto world and working together. Uh, we're also looking at what are performance elements that are specific to automatic driving systems and how do we develop that in, in a DSSAD system. In our EDR working group, our, our subgroup on, on EDRs, we're looking at what are the performance elements that are appropriate for ADS equipped vehicles. We are looking in the future, one of the proposals for moving forward that we're looking at is are we going to look at EDRs for heavy duty vehicles? Uh, that would request, that request came from our colleagues from the commission uh, to meet their general safety regulation mandates. And we will be looking at that and working with them um, to, to move that forward. So I'm hoping to do that shortly. Um, and also looking at what other additional data requirements should an event data recorder contain moving forward? What are the things that we need to look at how do we store that information and how do we make sure um, that we are protecting those important privacy rights as well. So lots are happening in the group. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with my colleagues and um, look forward to continuing our work on this very, very important subject. And thank you all very much for your attention.